Hi. In this video, we're going to run through the second line of hardware stuff in system preferences. In the last couple of videos, we talked about the first row of personal. Uh, here we'll talk about hardware, and I'll spend one more video talking about a few more things in system and internet and wireless. For the most part, I'm just going to touch on some of the useful areas and kind of point you in the right direction of where you can find stuff. The fun thing about system preferences, though, is you can do exploring for yourself, and um, uh, you can't really break anything. You can just change uh, preferences, but you can always change it back. It's not like you can accidentally delete anything here. So I'll just get you started, and feel free to open up system preferences on your own computer and play around. Okay. Um, I'm, for the most part, going to skip the CDs and DVDs section. If you click on it, it's just going to ask you, what do you want to do when you insert a blank so-and-so? Most of us leave these settings as they are. Displays here is obviously where you can change how your display or your monitor uh, appears. Uh, I'm running on a laptop, so this is my highest what we call resolution. Uh, some people like to make this a smaller resolution so they can read text better, um, but it makes everything grainy and lower quality. So as a rule of thumb, I try and keep it on the highest resolution. Uh, this is a nice checkbox here to adjust the brightness as your room or your surroundings gets lighter or darker. Uh, you can also calibrate your monitor here by clicking on color and calibrate. Uh, most of them are fine right off the bat though. If you're doing professional color work, uh, graphic design, print material, photographs, things like that, you might want to look into uh, professional color calibration stuff. Click on show all in the top left to come back here. Energy save Saver is a useful place. If you have a laptop, a, a newer laptop, you might have this option to switch uh, your graphics card between saving you battery life or higher performance. If you do change this, it will ask you to log out. I don't want to do that. I'll click cancel. Um, but do just keep in mind that if you know you're going to be on an airplane without power for five hours, you might switch this back to better battery life. Down here, you'll have your two tabs on how your computer is going to sleep, either in battery or when it's attached to a power adapter. Toggle between these, you can adjust uh, when your computer will sleep and when your display will sleep. When your display sleeps, it really just means that the display brightness is turned off, but the computer itself is still running just fine. Um, so this is a, I would put this around five minutes. It's just a good way to, to save energy when you're not using the computer. And then put your computer sleep uh, up a little bit higher because when your computer actually goes to sleep here after, in my case, 11 minutes, um, it will actually kind of pause everything. It takes a second to boot back up. Uh, so set your settings differently between battery and power adapter if you have a laptop. If you have a desktop, you're not going to see either of these two tabs. In the bottom right, this is a useful feature. You can schedule uh, sleep, wake, startup, things like that um, by days and hours and things like that. Keyboard um, is great. Uh, you can illuminate your keyboard in low light positions this is in, or conditions. This is a, a nice automatic feature on most of the newer computers. And if you want, you can uh, check this box here. That's going to turn off all the features that are printed on your function keys, like all the quick shortcuts for expose and screen brightness and sound and things like that. If you're using a Final Cut or some kind of professional program that uses those function keys, you might consider turning this off or checking this box. Keyboard shortcuts here uh, are really nice. If there is not a keyboard shortcut for a feature that you use often um, somewhere on the computer, you can click this plus button to create new keyboard shortcuts. A real nice feature. Down here, toggling between this will uh, change how your tab key works on your keyboard. Um, currently, uh, as it's set right now, when I hit tab, it's just going to uh, cycle between text boxes and lists, but if I click this button, then it will cycle between any button that I can choose. Notice as I tap the tab key, the blue box is going to move around virtually every button. Uh, this is a great way of, of using only your keyboard to control your computer, because now I can hit the space bar to select this button instead of actually using my uh, mouse. 
Uh, it's kind of a power user feature, but uh, I personally really like it. Play around with it and uh, explore for yourself. If you have a mouse connected, it'll look like this. In my case, I have a Bluetooth Magic Mouse connected. You'll have your features on whether or not you want to use secondary click, which most of you may know as right click. You can choose kind of where you're right clicking. And if you want to scroll with momentum. Screen zoom is a nice feature. Notice that when I move my mouse over it, you'll see the video on the uh, right side of how to use that. When you want to zoom in on something on your screen, you hold down control on your keyboard and uh, just kind of flick a finger up or down on your mouse to zoom in and out. So that's nice. Uh, you can also change your mouse tracking speed, how quickly it flies around the screen here, uh, as well as scrolling and double click. If you have a trackpad, if you're on a laptop, which I also am, you'll see this window where you can toggle on and off all these different features. Again, just hover your mouse over one feature. You'll notice the white arrow pointing to the video on the right side on how to use that feature. So uh, go ahead and come through here and uh, decide how you want your trackpad to work. And all the same tracking speed features are along the top. Print and fax, home stretch. This is one way to add a printer. You'll notice printers and scanners are listed over here. Plus button in the bottom left lets you add either one. Um, this is kind of a, a nice change in Snow Leopard specifically where you can actually control scanners from um, or you have more, more control over scanners from system preferences and a program called Preview down here in the dock um, as opposed to needing to use third-party software to control your scanner such as the software that might come with this Canon printer for example. Um, default settings are down here so uh, for example, if you move to another country and you use a four paper, for example, and you don't want to have to change that every single time you print something, you come to System Preferences here and change your default paper size. Um, that's different for each printer that you go to, so you have to change it for each one. There. Last thing is sound. Fairly straightforward. You can choose your sound effect for whenever your computer needs to tell you something is wrong. There's an independent volume level for this, uh, the alert sound, uh, which is separate from your general output volume, which is what everything else uses. Uh, this here is a nice checkbox. It's not new to Snow Leopard, but it is fairly recent. Um, I personally don't like to hear this sound when I change my volume. So I uncheck the box here, and it's quiet when I adjust my volume. So. Uh, if you are a student who has to adjust the volume while you're in class or an adult who is in a meeting or anything else where you don't want the volume uh, buttons to make noise because you're turning it down and you want less volume, go ahead and come into System Preferences and check this box here. Output, of course, is where you're going to choose uh, where the sound comes out of your computer. In my case, I'm using headphones to record this podcast or this uh, YouTube video. Um, so I have headphones as my output source, as well as a microphone for my input source. Um, that's it for your hardware line and system preferences. Come in here and uh, tweak to your heart's content um, to make all your stuff work the way you want it.